Shortly before 2 a.m., a white Ford van was moving at a modest speed along a virtually empty carriageway. It might have been any one of a thousand places on the motorway network. Occasionally a lorry caught up and overtook. The boy passenger felt extremely irritated by the driver's caution, at no time exceeding 55 miles per hour. <laughs> at least he shut up, though, thought the boy, referring to the driver, who in fact had not shut up, but sang along with every song that came on the radio. The boy recalled the question-and-answer session he'd been subjected to after first hitching the ride. <laughs> it had posed no problem. He was sure his rehearsed answers sounded convincing. He was 17 and going to spend a few weeks with an older brother in London. He'd even been able to say what his brother's job was, his name and his girlfriend's name. The boy had invented a whole history for himself. He was, in fact, only 15, a runaway. The background he'd escaped from told in his eyes. There was a fixed aggression about his features and a world weariness that spoke volumes. He reckoned on at least a couple more hours before they arrived in London, maybe longer at the sluggish speed they were travelling. Perhaps it'll work out well for me, he thought. No point getting there in the middle of the night. From the van speakers... The nighttime DJ introduced that all time favourite about the Windy City, inimitably sung by no other than Old Blue Eyes. The boy sighed inwardly as the squatly proportioned driver joined Frank with gusto. Despite the man's awful singing, the youth was finding it increasingly difficult to keep his eyelids open. He felt his head nod forward and jerked back into the seat. The driver and his vocal accompaniments sounded far off, as if at the end of a long and echoing tunnel. The driver smiled as he caught sight of his passenger falling asleep and immediately turned the radio off the abruptness of which startled the boy momentarily. I'm stopping at these services. I need a rest and a bite to eat. What about you? I'll stay here if that's OK, replied the boy. No problem. I'll be about an hour. As they came off the motorway and drew into the service area, the boy saw his all-singing, all-driving companion more clearly as light spilled into the cab. The driver was in his late thirties. The boy reckoned he would be about the same height as himself when they were not seated, about five foot five inches, except the driver appeared to be as broad as he was high. He wore a woolen cap that covered the top of his head all the way down his forehead to just above the eyebrows. The cap was either black or blue. The light was insufficient to distinguish which although he could make out the man's gingery hair, which sprouted in wiry curls about his ears and the back of his head, wherever the cap didn't reach. The driver put the van into a parking space. Sure you don't want anything? No, I I'm OK. The driver got out and began to walk away. The boy was about to close his eyes, when he saw the driver in the wing mirror come to an abrupt stop and turn around as if he'd forgotten something. He returned to the passenger door and opened it. I just thought, he said amiably, look, get out and I'll show you. What? asked the boy. The driver had already begun to walk to the back of the van. The boy released his safety belt and jumped down from the cab. At the rear, 
The driver had opened one of the double doors and had switched on a light, revealing the van's lit interior. There were half a dozen boxes marked fragile. What? asked the boy. The driver pointed to a mattress and some folded blankets that were piled on top of a box structure fitted across the width of the van at the driving cab end. You'll sleep better there. The boy looked hesitant. <laughs> it opens and locks from the inside, the driver said, demonstrating the door's locking mechanism. You can get out if you need a pee, he laughed. The bed looked very appealing. The boy nodded and stepped into the van's lit interior. The driver immediately slammed the door and locked it with his key. He required nothing at the service area and went back to his cab. He was about to start the engine when he felt the van shake. There was no sound. The van's interior was completely soundproofed. It must have been quite an impact. Another rocking motion followed a few seconds after the first, followed after a short interval by a third. <laughs> Very spirited, the driver said. Then, with a contented smile, he started the engine and pulled away. He switched the radio back on 